Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. We are discussing about storm water and flood management in module number 8. So, in today's lecture, lecture number 34, we will discuss about flood control and management. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include floods, causes, flood damages, flood forecasting and warning, flood control, reservoir operation, flood management. And some of the keywords for today's lecture include flooding, flood control and flood management. So, as we were discussing earlier, so storm water and its management is a big issue. So, when we discuss about the watershed management, so we have to see that within the watershed, say how the rainfall runoff is taking place and then uh, say how the flood routing or flow routing we have to do and then um, whether there is any scope for flooding in that area. So, all those issues uh, we have to look into. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss say why this type of flooding can take place on a watershed basis or a particular area and then uh, what are the causes and then uh, what kind of control measures we can adopt in order to reduce this, reduce this flooding. So, let us look into the flooding problems. So, as I mentioned earlier, so floods affects say, say a large number of people say some estimate says that flood affects lives of more than 65 million people per year globally. So, you can see that that indicates how much is the, the, the condo of problems say due to the flooding. So, more than any other type of disasters including war, droughts, famine and other problems or including earthquake, we can see that this flood related problems or flood, the, 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 the death or other related issues related to flooding is much, much more. So, that way uh, we have to see that flooding say we have to accept it is a major problem and then we have to look into uh, the these problems and then we have to look into the control measures so that we can reduce the problems of flooding. So, say for example, in East and Southeast Asia say during the monsoon season, say generally this monsoon season will be say June to September, October. So, we, we can see that most of these rivers say in this region uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia, we can see that the, the, the river flow will be more than 10 times that of uh, dry season flow. So, that way this river, most of the river will be overflowing in many of the regions and then uh, that creates a major flooding problems in many of these areas in South Asia and East, uh, East Asia. So, it is estimated that, so that way may many of these uh, countries have taken number of steps to reduce these flooding problems and even large number of dams were constructed in the past to reduce this flooding problem. An estimate says that about 13 percent of the 45,000 large dams in the world, these dams are built say for flood management function. So, in a 75 countries about uh, 13 percent of the large 45,000 dams, these are only built to control the flooding problems in many of the areas. So, that way we can say we can look into that say what, what kind of big problem is there due to flooding and then what kind of uh, say losses like uh, deaths and then economic losses all those things uh, we can see as, and this is a major issue in many countries. So, now let us look what are the, the damages, flood damages. So, we can see that uh, there are number of damages related to the floods. So, it can be loss of death uh, or loss of life, uh, the, the injuries and then uh, social disruption, then uh, say huge economic losses, then uh, say emergency cause, physical damage, collapse of buildings, structures, uh, uh, bridges, then uh, uh, roads, all this say will be affected then many of the utilities like your tele telecommunication systems, then electric supply all those will be affected. Then um, uh, say the cars and autos and other uh, say automobiles will be affected. Then uh, uh, the major impact especially to crops. So, when due to the heavy flooding in many areas, we can see that the, the crops will get to spoil and then uh, say there will be related famine and other is related issue. And then uh, lost uh, values of public agency services like uh, now whenever uh, say this kinds of flooding takes place, we have to put into public agencies like a police, fire force, 
then hospital etc to to cope up with this kinds of flooding so that is another way of, say big uh, damage or big loss uh, due to the flooding and then also <coughs> like losses like a tax losses property and sales all those things so that way we can see that flooding is a big problem and then uh, in most of the countries flooding flooding takes place and then say we have to look into how we can reduce this flooding problems how we can control this uh, flooding problems. So, that is what we will be uh, discussing today. So, uh, say whenever we discuss about floods generally uh, most of the time this floods happens due to heavy rainfall that means say in country like India or South Asia it will be mainly due to the, the, the heavy monsoon which will be taking place from say uh, 3 to 4 months starting from June to September or October uh, of the year. So, that, that is you know, say one reason, but uh, of course many other reasons are also there like um, in coastal urban cities as we discussed earlier also when heavy rainfall takes place simultaneously if tidal effects also takes place then the flooding problem increases. Sim similarly, then uh, say the, the, the say wherever especially hilly regions or wherever say, uh, say snowfall is there when snow melt takes place uh, then also there is possibility of flooding. So, let us look into the, the different causes of flooding. So, as, a, as we discussed say flood can occur when a river exceeds its bank full stage and then water will subsequently inundate the adjacent surrounding area. So, generally say in most of the areas what happens is that say the, the river will be overflowing and then uh, uh, the, the this uh, water will be going to the surrounding areas and that inundate the adjacent surrounding areas. So, as, as we were discussing, so the floods can be due to heavy rainfall uh, like long periods of heavy rainfall will lead to an increase in surface runoff and increase in uh, river level. Uh, so, that is can be one reason and one of, most of the time this is the main reason as far as flooding is concerned. Then snow melts, so water in, sto in storage is often freed by spring melts uh, increasing surface runoff. So, uh, with the uh, snow melt say the surface runoff increases and that can be also a cause of flooding. And then uh, say some of the causes like uh, deforestation say if say as we were discussing uh, in some of the early lectures whenever forest, forest is so, say it, it uh, store some uh, portion of the, the, uh, the, the runoff uh, so that the runoff will be slowly taking place. So, when deforestation takes place um, in a large scale then what happens is say the cutting down of trees leads to uh, reduction in interception rates and an increase in surface runoff. So, this may also lead to rapid erosion rates due to a lack of stability in the uh, soil subsurface. So, that way uh, this uh, the some of the causes can be like deforestation and also like um, the in coastal regions tidal effects and, uh, and then uh, in some locations due to any reasons any, any, any dam break takes place. So, that can be also a cause of uh, flooding. And then uh, of course, in uh, say in urban areas whenever say urbanization takes place say due to uh, say sudden uh, say increase of urban uh, say the, the, the um, uh, concrete surfaces um, or impermeable areas in cities then that may lead to an increase in uh, surface runoff. So, as we were discussing in, in one of the earlier lectures. So, whenever the, uh, the impervious area increases then uh, there will be as uh, the time of concentration will be reduced and then there will be the peak will be increased. So, that way also especially in, an, in urban areas uh, say the urbanization can cause flooding. And then after urbanization the lag time is shortened, uh, peak flow is greatly increased and the total runoff is uh, com uh, compressed into a shorter time interval uh, favorable condition for intense flooding. So, especially in urbanization, the, the urbanization can also, also uh, cause uh, flooding. So, for, say for example, some calculation says in a city that is totally served by storm drains and where 60 percent of the land surface is covered by roads and buildings. So, then floods are almost 6 times more numerous than before urbanization. So, if before urbanization if it is a rural area there is a no um, uh, impervious much impervious area then say compared to that say if 60 percent of the area is covered then there is say some estimate says there is possibility of 6 times more flooding in that kind of area. So, urbanization can be a major cause of uh, flooding. So, that way say when we look into cause of flooding, so say uh, as we can see here say rivers are more liable to flooding 
uh, say like uh, due to various reasons it can be heavy rainfalls, snow melt all those things and then uh, the banks overflows. So, and then as we discussed the urbanization and deforestations and especially in coastal region in the reasons can be also tidal effects. So, where the tidal also simultaneously rise uh, and then also say like uh, say sometimes say failure of a dam all those things uh, can be some of the causes as far as flooding is concerned. So, on a watershed basis as we discussed the same if this is a watershed then say all the flow will be keep on coming as runoff from various sub catchments and then it will be say uh, uh, routed through the channel. So, that way then say, uh, say when this level rises above the banks then flooding takes place. So, that way on a watershed basis uh, we can uh, say cal calculate or estimate how the how much flooding can take place uh, through the some of the mathematical models which we discussed earlier. So, now uh, say let us look what will be the results of this flooding. So, we have seen that uh, the damages flood damages are much much big. Uh, so, it is not, not only loss of life, but uh, huge economic loss also uh, taking place. So, let us look at some of the important points what are the results of uh, flooding. So, due to flooding as we, we, we can see that um, large amount of water will be flowing through the river. So, flooding greatly increases the river's energy, so it can do more work. So, that way the velocity of flow will be increasing, the depth of flow will be increasing, the deeper and faster flowing river can carry more load and more sediments will be carried and then also maybe um, say trees and uh, all those things also um, garbage etcetera will be also will be carried uh, through the river due to the, uh, the increase in uh, carrying capacity. So, most rivers turn brown because of the large amount of sediments uh, carried in suspension. So, due to, during the heavy monsoon or heavy rainfall season the 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 uh, silt will be or sediment will be carried through the river. The amount of erosion carried out by hydraulic action and abrasion is greatly increased. So, due to the uh, increase in velocity, increase in depth, so whatever the, the, the river uh, the, the flow conditions in greatly increase and then the actions like hydraulic actions, um, uh, the velocity, depth of flow all those things and then the abrasion. Uh, so, that the, the, the sides of the river may also get eroded, so that will be also taking place. So, these are some of the important uh, effects or the results of uh, flooding. The amount of erosion carried out by hydraulic action is uh, increased and then, so how does this happen? So, as I mentioned when the velocity increases, so if the sides are not sta stable, the river both sides are not stable or the bed level is not stable, then all the soil will be carried say will be eroded with respect to the, the movement of the water uh, within the river. And then in the lowlands or the downstream side many features are formed during flooding uh, like um, say, uh, say uh, large kinds of deposition can take place and then um, uh, so, they are uh, like oxbow lakes and then uh, if uh, the levees are there that will be affected or a uh, large amount of uh, deposition takes place especially in delta regions or wherever the, the, the low land regions. So, these are some of the important results of flooding uh, say which, which generally we can see say during especially during the uh, monsoon season. So, now uh, say when we look into the, the damages uh, caused by this uh, flooding, so we can say classify the damages into short term damages and the long term damages. So, short term means immediately say when flooding takes place immediately within say that time period or immediate time period what are the losses or what are the damages and uh, long term means say what will be the repercussion, economic repercussion or the infrastructure repercussion due to the flooding. So, uh, flood damages we can classify into short term damages and long term damages. So, short term damages like as we discussed it can be loss of life, destruction of property, crop damages, loss of communication networks, fresh water pollution, uh, loss of electric power. So, all those are some of the short term uh, effects or damages uh, due to the, the flooding. So, these are immediately visible damages and then that uh, these kinds of damages uh, critically affect the, the area 
and then uh, say large kind of say, um, say migration can take place due to these kinds of uh, um, say short term effect. And a long term effect or long term damages include replacing what is lost or damaged. So, when due to the heavy flooding say so much of infrastructure facility will be affected, then um, so much area will be eroded and then crop will be affected. Um, and then uh, electric power network or the, the communication network will be affected. So, now say uh, after the flooding event is over, we have to um, say replace what has happened since so that the people can start their normal life. So, that is the long term effect, it is mainly economic loss, huge economic loss, huge uh, infrastructure losses. So, governments have say how, how to get the funds to rebuild the infrastructure say like roads, uh, water treatments, then um, uh, say bridges, then uh, say electric power network like that. So, that is the especially uh, long term uh, damages we can measure in terms of economic terms. Uh, so, then also uh, say due to heavy flooding uh, say um, uh, many of the, the, the agricultural land will be affected and then crop destruction takes place. So, once one crop is lost then uh, you can see that um, food shortage will take place and that can uh, lead to a famine. So, that way flood damages can be uh, short term or uh, long term. So, that way this uh, uh, say when we discuss about the watershed management, uh, we have to see that how we can uh, say control this flooding, what kind of measures can be adopted so that the flooding effect will be uh, reduced and then uh, with respect to the weather system say with respect to the weather prediction and then uh, say the modeling like flood routing or say rainfall runoff modeling whether we can uh, forecast say how, how, how say for the given rainfall condition or the for uh, non rainfall condition how much flooding is possible. So, flood forecasting is one of the important thing which we, we can look into. Uh, so, once we can forecast then we can also think about uh, flood warning so that um, the people can be cautioned as this area will be flooded. So, that you have to take appropriate measures uh, to say take away your valuable things and then vacate the people from that uh, flood affected possible flood affected area. So, that way flood forecasting is a very important. So, for flood forecasting say generally the it is a use of real time precipitation and st stream flow data uh, in rainfall runoff uh, and the stream flow routing models. So, so, we were discussing in the last uh, some of the last few lectures say about this uh, uh, say rainfall runoff modeling uh, say stream flow routing. So, these are all say uh, we can this kinds of models we can directly utilize for flood forecasting. So, uh, say, uh, so the for forecasting is to uh, say to identify how much the flow rates and then water levels for period ranging from few hours to uh, days ahead depending upon the size of the watershed or the river basin. So, depending upon the, the, the location depending upon the watershed or river basin scale and then depending upon the, the um, precipitation pattern say sometimes the rainfall takes place for a uh, few days or say few hours. So, depending upon that. Uh, say we may have to go for short term flood forecasting or long term flood forecasting and then um, uh, also uh, we, may, we may have to say calculate for the given rainfall condition how much is the runoff and then corresponding stream flow and then its routing. So, all these are uh, very important as far as flood forecasting is concerned. So, flood forecasting can also make use of forecast of precipitation to extend the uh, lead time available. So, uh, say uh, in flood forecasting we have to also identify the, the rainfall pattern which is going to come say now presently if heavy rainfall takes place and next few days how the rainfall is going to uh, take place or precipitation is going to take place. So, this forecasting is also required since there will be some lead time uh, available. So, so that we can uh, predict say we from one rainfall event to how another rainfall event say what will be the effect as far as flooding is concerned. So, that way uh, uh, the forecasting system may account for like um, uh, other than the precipitation we may have to account for the snow melt say if the area snow in some of the areas where snow is there then what is the possibility of snow melt. Then flood plains and uh, washed lands, so how the, the flood plains will be affected. Then uh, flood defenses including control gates, so if the reservoirs uh, say if we are going to some control gates or if tidal gates where the tides will be entering from the, the, the exuries to the river. Uh, so, that kind of gates how we can control. 
then uh, tidal effects near the sea and the sea surges all those things um, uh, we may have to account for. So, flood forecasting is not only uh, simply the, the, the rainfall runoff forecasting or the, the rainfall forecasting and then corresponding runoff evaluation, but we may have to also uh, deal with the various other phenomena like snow melt and then um, say um, uh, the control gates, operational control gates and then um, the tidal effects, sea surges uh, like that. So, that way all these things we have to account as far as flood forecasting is uh, concerned. So, that way uh, if we can forecast say for the given say weather prediction system say for uh, few days or few hours. So, accordingly if we can identify the rainfall pattern or the rainfall intensity and from that we can identify say the runoff or the flow depth variations or the discharge variation and then um, say depending upon the area depending upon if we can identify the possible areas of flooding and then uh, we can uh, uh, prepare a flood warning maps and then that can be transmitted to the public. So, that uh, the administration and public can take appropriate uh, measures. So, that way flood forecasting and warning is uh, very important. So, flood forecasting through uh, say uh, range of hydrodynamic snow melt or flood routing models. So, through these models only we go for flood forecasting. That way flood forecasting is an important component of flood uh, warning system. So, the distinction between the flood forecasting and warning is that the outcome of the flood forecasting is set of forecast time profiles of channel flows or river levels at various locations. So, uh, say when, when we do, do this kinds of say rainfall runoff modeling or flood, flood routing, so we can identify uh, say uh, the, with respect to time uh, which of the area will be affected, then the, uh, the water levels how it will be varying in the channels or rivers. Uh, and then at various location how the the, uh, the flood uh, or the, the water will spread. So, like that. So, that way the flood warning is the, the task of making use of this forecast to make decisions about whether warnings of floods should be issued to the general public or whether uh, previous warnings should be rescinded or re retracted. So, that way say uh, whether we have to go for flood warning say depending upon the rainfall condition, depending upon the river level conditions or channel level conditions, uh, we can decide whether we have to uh, give a warning and if already some warnings are given whether that is going to continue. Uh, so, that if it is not going to continue, we can retract back or rescind so that say yes, the, the possibility of flood warning is flood is not there so that people can start their normal uh, way of life. So, that way uh, flood forecasting and flood warning are uh, very important aspects uh, as far as flood management is concerned either on a watershed basis or on a uh, river basin scale. So, now uh, within this perspective we are discussing about the flooding, uh, dam flooding, flooding uh, uh, the damages due to flooding, then causes of flooding and then uh, uh, flood forecasting and warning. So, now let us look what kind of control measures uh, we can adopt so that um, the, the effect of floods can be reduced. So, uh, generally say the flood control measures can be uh, two varieties, one is structural uh, type of flood control measures and second one is uh, non-structural type of um, uh, say uh, flood control measures. So, when we look into structural uh, say measures actually what we are doing is uh, say uh, what we are doing is say if we identify some areas where flooding problem is there, then we, we construct certain structures or various um, measures so that uh, say the flooding will not take place or flooding effect will be reduced uh, in that area. So, that way uh, there can be number of uh, uh, structural measures which we can adopt depending upon the location, area, then um, the river flow condition uh, and uh, the geographical conditions. And as far as non-structural measures are there, say we are not doing any this kinds of uh, construction activities or this kinds of things, but say uh, we can say for example, we can go, go for uh, flood zoning map so that uh, uh, people will be careful while uh, making a building in particular location wherever the flood zones are there. So, now let us look into the details of the structural measures. So, so many st structures can be constructed especially uh, on uh, river sides um, uh, or ri river banks so that um, the area the, the, the flood, flood prone area can be protected. So, some of the things which we can do are listed here. So, like uh, first one is levees. 
So, these levees are embankments constructed parallel to the course of stream to prevent inundation of large areas. Uh, so, that way say the on the, the, the sides of the both sides of the river. So, uh, in parallel to the, the to the bank. So, we construct uh, say uh, the retaining walls or the, the uh, say some embankment kind of structures. So, that uh, the river banks will be raised. Uh, so, for a flood the, the whenever the water level rises it cannot spill over to the to the surrounding land so, and then we can protect the area. So, levees are generally uh, used to uh, say, uh, um, uh, say uh, reduce the flooding problems uh, wherever flood prone uh, especially flood prone rivers. So, some of the important design consideration while uh, um, designing levees include say location of the area uh, say uh, then slope uh, of the of the uh, the slope stability of the um, river banks then uh, the positivity of seepage, then interior drainage coming to the, the areas, then top width and freeboard, how much freeboard should be given, then what are the possibility of erosion uh, and then scour protection. So, all these are some of the important issues what we will be looking into when we uh, go for uh, the design of levees. Then another kind of structural structure which we can make is called uh, groins. So, these are dikes extending from the bank of river. Uh, so, it will be going say either perpendicular to some through some angle to the uh, bank of the river and generally these structures are made to protect the river banks. So, that uh, uh, the bank will not be eroded uh, uh, and then further the, the flooding problem will not take place. So, that these kinds of structures are called groins and then uh, sometimes we can construct cutoffs. So, cutoffs are artificial excavated cutoffs to uh, strengthen the channel. So, um, uh, straighten the channel not strengthen straighten the channel. So, uh, say uh, some some uh, the, the, the channel or rivers may be meandering and then it will be going say in a very regular way and then uh, when heavy um, uh, flow or heavy flooding takes place say uh, this uh, uh, irregular shape say the water will be flowing try to flow directly on a straight line and then uh, the, the area will be affected. So, that way um, before such a flooding possibilities and uh, we can straighten uh, the channels. So, through appropriate cutoff uh, say by considering the meandering nature of the of the channel. So, that kind of structure is called cutoff and then uh, uh, say we can also have um, uh, so some structures like uh, flood bypass. So, this bypass means say wherever um, possibility of say um, heavy flood say in some regions. So, we can uh, say uh, take the flow coming through say certain certain other means like um, tunnels or the pipes or through some other channels and then we can divert the uh, flood flow. So, flood by bypass means we are diverting a portion of the flood flow uh, so that the area will be saved especially in city regions say um, uh, if the, uh, the chronic uh, flood problems are there then we can construct a flood bypasses. Then uh, some of the other structural measures include uh, channelization. So, channelization means uh, uh, say some of the activities what we can do, we, we can clear the channel, then we can straighten it, then we can widen it, then we can deepen it and also then the, the sides uh, can be lined. Uh, so, that we this process we, we can co combine put it as channelization. Uh, so, uh, this will increase the flood carrying capacity of the river or the channel. So, that way the flooding problem will be reduced. And then uh, say uh, uh, if any bridges especially between the, the bridge piers the flow uh, conditions say sufficient flow cannot pass then that kind of bridges we can modify be by giving appropriate height or appropriate ducts and then uh, so that uh, the normal flow will be taking place. So, bridge modification is another structural measures like removal replacement or widening and raising as far as bridge is concerned. Then uh, uh, say like a flood proofing, so flood proofing means flood plane or flood uh, hazard zones uh, by uh, ring levees or flood walls. So, we can construct flood walls uh, say especially cities we can do flood proofing by constructing uh, say walls or levees and then the area can be uh, protected. 
Then uh, say also uh, depending upon the area we can have a, um, say if sufficient area is available we can have um, detention ponds or detention basins uh, where uh, say uh, some other rain water will be stored for some time and then that will be released uh, gradually once the uh, rainfall is uh, or the flood problem is receded. So, that way the detention basins are small impoundments designed to temporarily uh, store storm runoff and uh, this storm runoff will be uh, released gradually. So, that way uh, these are some of the important structural measures. So, that means we are going to for some way of another way of construction or some uh, modification to the existing system. So, that the flooding the flood prone area will be protected or flood problem will be uh, reduced. So, these are some of the important structural measures which we can adopt as far as flood control measures are concerned. So, now let us look into some of the non structural measures. So, this non structural measures uh, say we can do many things. So, some of the important things are listed here. So, we can uh, establish uh, regulatory flood plains. So, depending upon the river flow we can historic we can study the historical uh, the uh, flooding problems or the, uh, fl the flood levels or the, uh, the uh, depth of flow taking place uh, in particular location especially in city regions. And then uh, say we can uh, have some rules and regulations so that um, no construction will take place in the flood plains. Uh, so, that um, the property and the human life can be uh, saved. So, that way we can establish regulatory flood plains and then uh, storm water regulations. So, storm water whether as we discussed whether we can uh, store some of the water or we can go for water harvesting or we can um, uh, that way uh, uh, through afforestation all those measures which we discussed earlier also we can reduce the intensity of um, the uh, storm water uh, movement and then uh, th that kind of regulations we can have. So, storm water regulations are uh, another flood control um, uh, non structural flood control measures. And then also uh, we can have flooding zones or flood zones. So, uh, for the given uh, for the given river according to the given conditions after studying the, the rainfall to run off or the flooding problems for large number of years like uh, 10 years, 50 years or 100 years then we can uh, generate flood zone map. So, that uh, uh, we can uh, say restrict the development in that flood zone areas. So, flood zone um, mapping is uh, is one of the generally used technique uh, as far as a non structural measures is concerned. Then uh, also uh, as we discussed earlier we can go for uh, various watershed management plans like rainwater harvesting then uh, water conservation measures within the area. So, all those things uh, will give us some effect as far as flood control is concerned. Then flood emergency planning. So, if the flood uh, is going to take place or if there is possibility of flooding we can uh, create emergency plans uh, say nowadays uh, in many of the states and uh, and uh, at uh, uh, central level in India we have got a national disaster management authority. So, this disaster management authority also deals with the flooding. So, they will come up with uh, certain guidelines. So, which way each uh, authority or each state and each district has to uh, follow. So, that way uh, we can have flood emergency planning. And then wherever say the, the flood prone areas say if there is any uh, say some areas we can identify that is flood prone then we can relocate the people and the, the whatever the, that location. And then of course, say another important measures we can uh, say for say to save the economic losses we can go for flood insurance. So, that is another measures which we can adopt. So, this is actually flood insurance say various um, insurance companies provide. Uh, this flood insurance, but uh, this this based generally based upon uh, flood risk assessment or flood risk zones uh, of the area uh, which we consider. And then of course, another important uh, um, non structural measures is flood appropriate flood forecasting and warning. So, that uh, the people can take or the public can take appropriate um, uh, measures. So, to protect themselves and their uh, properties. So, this way, uh, so uh, that way uh, we can see that uh, the flood control measures are concerned it can be either uh, structural measures or uh, non structural measures. So, now uh, let us look into say how we can control this um, um, flood or say let us look at some of the important aspects which we can do to uh, manage the flood or flood control management. So, some of the important uh, ways 
uh, through which uh, we can manage the flood are listed here. Uh, so, this uh, actually reduce the intensity of flooding and then ultimately it may also uh, say it may keep away the possibility of uh, flooding. So, some of the important things can be done are listed here uh, like afforestation. So, we can plant trees um, uh, that may increase the interception rates and then uh, that may reduce the surface runoff. So, this is can be uh, one managerial measures uh, measure. Then uh, second one is dams and reservoir. So, depending upon the area so as I mentioned earlier say about uh, 13 percent of the world largest dams are constructed only for the uh, flood protection or flood control management. So, that way dams and reservoir. So, this hold back and regulate the flow of wa uh, river water and this can be used as a fresh water supply and also generation of hydroelectric power. So, that way dams and reservoirs and then uh, diversion channels and basins. So, uh, wherever flood prone areas are there we can divert with uh, the some of the flood water through some other extra channels, pipes or tunnels. So, overflow channels which uh, takes surplus water out of a river in times of flooding. And then uh, channel straightening and dredging as we already mentioned. Uh, so, this may smoothens the ch uh, channels to increase the uh, speed I mean velocity of the river and uh, get water out of the drainage basin as quickly as possible. So, that way uh, the, the, the intensity of flood will be reduced or the, 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 uh, uh, the flood depth or flood depth will be uh, uh, reduced. Then some of the other measures uh, say like uh, either it can be structural measures uh, for flood control management like uh, artificial levees. So, we can uh, say construct uh, uh, levees on, on river banks uh, so that um, uh, the, the more water will be ho hold in the river and then um, we can have culverts. So, semicircular smooth channels increases velocity and gets uh, water away from the urban areas as quickly as possible. Then uh, revetment ch channel walls or gabions. So, these are some of the measures which we can adopt. Uh, so, like uh, strengthen uh, the river banks from erosion using large um, uh, lumps of stones. Uh, then uh, say we can have gabions or walls. Then restricted use of uh, flood plains. So, as we discussed, so this is a non-structural measure. So, we can have legislation so that um, uh, higher selective uh, so that um, uh, there will not be any any uh, construction in the restricted flood plain areas. Then higher selective insurance premiums or refusal to insure particular locations. So, all these can can be used. And then finally, coordinated flood warning system. So, this is one of the important thing which can be done as flood control management. So, this uh, coordinated flood forecasting and flood warning. Uh, so, and, and uh, emergency reaction proce um, procedures we can have. So, uh, uh, so that uh, some specified agencies for example, environment agency in United Kingdom, um, say environment protection agency in USA or um, national disaster management authority in India. So, these kinds of agencies can coordinate the, the flood forecasting and flood warning. So, that uh, the people will be uh, say um, uh, the, the, the people can be warned that there is a possibility of flooding and then appropriate uh, measures can be uh, taken. So, that way flood control management is uh, very important. So, earlier we were discussing that um, uh, say uh, the, some of the dams constructed uh, say about 30 or 15 percent of the uh, large dams are mainly constructed for flood uh, management or flood control. So, that way the reservoirs uh, formed by this uh, the dams. Uh, so, the, if, we, if, we can, if we operate appropriately uh, many of these reservoirs uh, say we can uh, control flood very effectively. So, that way reservoir operation uh, with respect to the to the uh, say especially in monsoon season or, or flood uh, rainfall season and uh, that is uh, very important. So, let us look at some of the important aspects of flood control and uh, reservoir operation. So, dams and reservoirs have helped immensely in attaining self sufficiency in, in food grain production besides flood control and drought mitigation. So, that we, uh, we have seen earlier. So, that way uh, this reservoir stores a large amount of water and that uh, the uh, that will uh, say reduce the intensity of, of flooding or the, the flow condition that can uh, takes place within a river. So, flow depth in rivers depends on reservoir re releases 
or reservoir storages. So, a reservoir is a depository for the storage of water up to a maximum limit. So, there will be maximum water level possibility within the reservoir. Uh, so, depending upon the, the, uh, the rainfall condition, depending upon the runoff condition, uh, we can manage this level uh, so that um, uh, appropriate flood controlling is possible. And then uh, since spilling uh, water implies uh, passage through a critical hydraulic section, a dynamic storage volume can be filled up only uh, during spills. So, we have to appropriately manage say during the rainfall season how much spill should be allowed and how much should be stored. So, that uh, we can have effective flood control through appropriate reservoir operation. So, operational pool say it is the uh, which is defined as the volume between the minimum level at which uh, control releases can be made and maximum uh, static uh, full pool. So, actually this uh, this uh, 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 the difference between this minimum level and maximum static full pool is generally utilized for uh, storage and that can be effectively operated. So, that the the say if there is possibility of flooding that can be uh, reduced. So, that way reservoir operation is uh, very important. So, now operational pool is conceptually divided into conservation and flood control pools. So, we, we were discussing about this operational pool in the last slide. Uh, so, this can be uh, conceptually divided into conservation and flood control pools. So, conservation means how much water should be conserved for future purposes and then flood control pools is to reduce the flood how, how much effectively we have to uh, store. So, maximum possible uh, empty space is desirable for flood control especially in monsoon season uh, we have to keep a maximum uh, possible empty space. Then uh, while water storage is required for the remaining objectives uh, of the uh, say like water supply, irrigation, hydro power especially if the reservoir is for multi purposes uh, other than flood control. So, we have to see that um, sufficient water is available for future water supply, irrigation, uh, hydro power generation etcetera. So, since flood risk uh, differs according to the season, the flood control uh, pool uh, typically um, uh, varies according to the time of the year. So, as I mentioned during the monsoon season, say um, uh, heavy rainfall season, we have um, more flooding problems. So, that way uh, we should have um, uh, the operational pool which is uh, for the flood control. So, that way we have to control. So, the, the reservoirs can be single reservoir uh, say where we can have direct control only one reservoir how much is to be released or how much is to be stored so that flooding will be reduced. So, like that we can easily take decision, but wherever possible if there are multiple reservoirs or um, uh, a system of reservoirs. So, this always will be advantages as far as flood control is concerned since whatever extra flood is coming will be stored in a cascade of reservoirs. So, a cascade of reservoir is more effective in terms of peak delay than the equivalent storage capacity combined in one reservoir. So, if multiple reservoirs are there, so we can effectively operate the reservoir in such a way that say uh, good storage can be also given and good say release will be appropriately done uh, from the each reservoir. So, that uh, flood will be controlled uh, and then also uh, say appropriate storage will be given to uh, each uh, reservoir. So, now uh, say when we co co say look into say some of the reservoir which is only constructed for uh, flood management. So, which are called flood reservoir manage uh, flood reservoirs. So, how to manage this? So, the flood control management approach say we can uh, specifically develop for that particular reservoir. So, considering the flood pool as a restriction for the optimization or simulation of the conservation pool. So, we have to, we may have to go for simulation uh, with respect to identify how uh, with respect to rainfall runoff and how much flow is taking place to the reservoir and then how to uh, say whether how much storage should be allowed. And then operation under flood conditions can be performed through previously set rule curves or within a uh, real time framework. So, we can have real time um, reservoir management for flood control uh, or we can also develop a root curve depending upon the past experiences, past data. We can generate root curve and using this root curve uh, we can operate the uh, reservoir for flood management. 
so, but of course, it is always better to go for real time management so, so that if the rainfall variation or of, of the, of the uh, due to, with respect to weather condition, we can have a, uh, say real time uh, flood control. So, the second approach is uh, uses a very much real time information, I mean the real time framework uh, information as possible from the whole system. Uh, as well as its uh, near future. So, it is not only current system, but for the coming few days or few weeks also how to operate the, the, the reservoir uh, for flood management. So, all these issues will be uh, considered. So, we can have a decision system which can be closely related to the real time operational forecasting and warning uh, availability. So, if the if the for particular area, if you are having the flood forecasting and flood warning system. So, by considering this, uh, we can uh, operate the flood reservoir and then uh, we can take appropriate decision how much storage should be given, how much release should be given. Uh, so, that finally, by considering all those things, we can have a real time flood management. So, the we can develop a uh, real time flood management. So, in this cases, say, so to reduce the, the silting problem in the reservoirs, we also have to deal with the sediment related problems. So, that will be also considered as far as uh, flood reservoir management, so that the capacity of the, of the reservoir uh, will be uh, maintained. So, now, uh, so we were discussing about the flood control management. So, let us uh, look into what are the important risk associated with uh, uh, say flood and flood control. So, some of the important risk uh, I have listed here. So, floods have uh, uh, say occurred throughout the time and are not necessarily damaging. So, sometimes say severe flood can have uh, say uh, uh, severe damages, but uh, so, so some minor floods there may not be much damage. So, early legislation authorized flood control in response for to devastating losses. So, depending upon the area, depending upon the location, we can have legislation and then we can have appropriate uh, flood control system. Uh, then we cannot rely, we cannot really control floods, but we can modify water flows in space and time. So, this uh, as we discussed uh, the flood, uh, flooding situation depends upon many parameters like meteorological parameters, geographical parameters or um, like uh, uh, conditions like earthquake or the uh, dam break. So, so many parameters will be there. Uh, so, we cannot uh, control all these parameters. So, that way uh, complete control of the flood is not possible. So, only thing is that we can modify uh, the problem or we can reduce the effect um, um, uh, in with respect to space and time. So, uh, say generally uh, say in countries like uh, America, uh, say uh, US Army Corps of Engineers, they, they take their mission is to assist with, um, with and provide leadership in managing the uh, flood risk. So, depending upon the agencies working in that particular country, uh, whether it is army or uh, disaster management cell, what whichever the agency. So, they can take the lead uh, leadership uh, to uh, for the control of flood or to reduce the flood problem. So, this include making the government investment for reducing damages from flood. So, like what kind of measures to be adopted in future and then uh, what kind of disaster management measures to be uh, adopted. So, that way complete description of a plan uh, that, uh, that can include all structural, non-structural, legal and institutional features uh, both proposed and existing that contribute to intended flood control outputs. So, that way we can come up with a flood risk management measures for the given area, for the given location uh, depending upon the various parameters uh, for that uh, for the particular agency which is dealing they can take the leadership and then come up with appropriate uh, measures as far as flood risk management is concerned. So, some of the important strategic goals when we discuss the flood risk management, so these are listed here. So, first one is provide current accurate flood plain information to the public and decision makers. So, this is very important. So, accordingly the decision makers can take decision and the public can react. Uh, so, th then second um, uh, strategic goal is identify and assess flood hazards po uh, posed by aging flood damage reduction in infrastructure. Uh, so, this we can assess and then take appropriate measures. Then third one is improve public awareness and com uh, comprehension of uh, flood risk. 
So, uh, this public information uh, or public aware awareness very important, so that um, the people can react up with uh, if sufficient time is given and then they can take uh, appropriate measures of the by themselves and then government can give uh, appropriate support. So, that way we can improve the public awareness. Then uh, integrate uh, flood damage and uh, flood hazard reduction uh, programs across say local government, state government or federal agencies. So, we can come up with integrated flood damage and flood hazard reduction. Then improve capabilities to collaboratively deliver and sustain flood damage reduction and flood hazard mitigation services to the nation. So, these are some of the important strategic goals which we can adopt as far as flood risk management is concerned. So, then if you look into this, this chart. So, there will be say initially high risk will be there, then uh, depending upon the activities given in that particular area, we can see that the risk will be uh, reducing. So, first one is like insurance, then uh, building codes, then uh, zoning, flood zoning, then um, levies, um, then contingency response plans, outreach, then there will be the risk will be uh, considerably we can reduce through various uh, plans as shown here. So, then um, say what are the uncertainties uh, associated with uh, the uh, uh, flooding problems or flood um, risk, risk management is concerned. So, in flood damage uh, reduction planning uncertainties include like uh, future hydrologic events. So, whether the rainfall is going to continue or when the next high uh, say high intensity event can take place. Then stream flow and rainfall, then choice of distribution and values of parameters then uh, simplified um, models of complex hydraulic uh, phenomena like geometric data, uh, uh, the, uh, the misalignment of structures, material variability uh, and slope and uh, reference factors etcetera. Then relationship between depth and inundation damage. So, uh, say we, we can identify this depth and inundation damage relationship. So, through structural values and locations and how the public will respond to a flood. Then structural and geotechnical performance uh, when subjected to floods. So, what are the structural related issues for the various structures like bridges, buildings etcetera and then uh, what are the foundation related problem like that. So, now uh, the when we discuss about the flood problem and then uh, we have to look into what are the restoration measures uh, which we can adopt. So, this we can have it in uh, say uh, in, uh, in about 5 steps. So, first one is uh, we have to uh, prepare plans, appropriate plans. So, that is in anticipation uh, say flood measures plans we have to develop. So, that is the before uh, the event threatens. Then uh, we can uh, go for say detection like uh, through warning flood warning or for, uh, say forecasting and warning. So, like detection ongoing information through that we can gather and provide warning to monitor prevention and mitigation systems. And third one what kind of preparation we can do. Uh, so, that uh, once flood warning is put or uh, say, uh, say, we, we say we can communicate with the people, we can communicate and take appropriate evacuation measures. Uh, then uh, say what will be the once the flooding starts or flooding takes place, what will be the first response. So, like um, actually what is happening first response. Uh, so, that is once the event has occurred the negative consequences uh, how we can minimize it and then what kind of action can be taken to save lives. Uh, then uh, we how we can give um, uh, say, um, say, um, uh, say like provide food shelters and clothing to the survivors. So, that um, the, the appropriate uh, say, uh, uh, response ca can be there. Uh, then once the flood is receded then what we have to look into is say how we can compensate for the people or how we can reconstruct uh, say what was say destroyed say like rebuilding restoration. So, this way uh, we can um, um, go through an appropriate uh, say uh, cycle as far as uh, flood problem and uh, uh, restoration is concerned. So, now before closing for today, so let us look some of the important aspects what are the flooding problems uh, in India and then uh, say how what kind of measures are taken to reduce this uh, flooding. So, uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier say uh, in India also flooding occurs in almost all rivers then say the reasons are some of the common reason which we discussed earlier like heavy rainfall inadequate capacity of rivers, uh, then uh, inadequate drainage network 
and then um, uh, sometimes heavy rainfall or climate change effects. So, these are all causes uh, the floods in India. Then uh, in northern India especially wherever uh, Himalayan regions ice jams or landslides blocking the streams and then uh, uh, eastern regions like typhoons and cyclones. This all causes the floods in as far as India is concerned. Then excessive rainfall combined with inadequate um, carrying capacity of streams resulting in uh, overspilling of banks uh, is the main cause of flooding in, in a majority of the cases in India. Uh, so, then uh, if you look into the, the one, say an assessment by Ministry of Water Resource, so we can see that about uh, 35 million hectares of the land is um, uh, say liable to floods. So, this is about um, uh, say more than 10 percent of the of the land. So, uh, say here uh, say as per Ministry of Water Resource website, so it is given state wise how much area is. Uh, liable to floods, say for example, Andhra Pradesh 1.39 million uh, hectares. So, like that state wise this uh, distribution is given uh, which the, the area which you, which are liable to uh, floods. So, as we, we were discussing, so we cannot uh, control the, the flood totally, but uh, what kind of measures can be taken uh, say like structural measures or non-structural measures to reduce the effect of flood. So, uh, flood being a natural phenomena, total elimination is not possible. Uh, so, so that we have to look into flood management which aims at uh, providing reasonable protection against damage at a reasonable economic cost. So, this is a uh, flood hazard map as far as India is concerned. So, wherever uh, this uh, red uh, say uh, color is there, so these are some of the areas uh, highly vulnerable to floods. So, especially in the Himalayan regions, Himalayan rivers like Ganges, Brahmaputra river and then Mahanadi river basins uh, like that um, uh, due to various causes as we discussed. Then uh, say in India the systematic planning for flood management commenced with the launching of national programs say early in 1954. So, last um, uh, 50, 60 years so government of India and the many other state governments are uh, doing uh, many measures uh, to reduce the flood hazards. So, during the last 58 years different methods of flood protection structural as well as non-structural have been implemented in different states. Structural measures like um, uh, st storage reservoirs, flood embankments, drainage net channels, uh, and erosion works, then uh, channel improvement works, detention basins, etc., uh, were undertaken on large scale wherever flood prone areas are there. And then non structural measures like uh, uh, flood forecasting, flood plain zoning, flood proofing, disaster preparedness, all the, 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 were um, uh, implemented, or a large number of agencies were. Uh, um, say established in the last um, uh, two three decades. Uh, so, now we are having appropriate flood forecasting warning system based upon the, uh, the forecast by Indian Meteor Department and then uh, the satellite uh, data which is provided by uh, Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, so, like that now uh, say number of uh, non structural measures are also undertaken. So, uh, as per the Ministry of Water Resources uh, website, say uh, some of the various flood management measures undertaken say last um, a few decades include flood embankments about 3500 uh, kilometer, uh, not, um, th sorry 35000 kilometer uh, flood embankments were constructed. Then uh, drainage channels for 51,317 kilometer. Then uh, towns protection works about 2,400 numbers done. Uh, villages raised uh, say so that it will be protected from uh, the the floods. So it is about 4,700. Then uh, say reservoirs are constructed with exclusive flood control storage as we discussed earlier. Some of the reservoirs like Maithan, Panjet, uh, then uh, Konar in Damodar valleys. Then uh, Chandil Dam on Subarna Rekha, then Rengali Dam in on Brahmini River. So, these are mainly constructed for flood control measures. Then last um, six decades a large number of dams were constructed. So, that uh, the life storage of 100, one, 177 billion cubic meter created so far in the various reservoirs for irrigation, hydropower generation, drinking water etcetera. So, this also help indirectly uh, in reducing the floods intensity by storing part of the uh, flood waters in them. So, these are some of the measures taken by government of India and various uh, state governments. 
So, as far as flood hazards is concerned, the flood management measures undertaken uh, so far has provided reasonable degree of protection to an area say about uh, 16.5 million hectares throughout the country. Uh, so, area benefited is listed here, then length of embankment is about um, uh, 34,397 uh, kilometer, then length of drainage channel, uh, then a town village protected. So, as we discussed earlier. So, these are some of the, the effects of this flood and in protection measures adopted by government of India and other state governments. So, then uh, also we are having an effective flood work, uh, forecasting system. So, this has been uh, recognized as one of the most important uh, aspects, reliable and cost effective. Then uh, recognizing the crucial role it, it can play, Central Water Commission, Ministry of Water Resources has set up a network of forecasting station throughout the country covering all important flood prone areas. Then the forecasts issued by these stations are used to alert the public and enable the administration uh, and other agencies so that um, appropriate measures can be taken. So, these are all done in collaboration or in coordination with the Indian Space Research Organization, Indian Meteorological Department and various uh, telecommunication uh, network. So, that appropriate uh, warnings will be given. So, as far as national rep response mechanism for uh, as far as flood is concerned, so first of all say the apex body is union cabinet and under union cabinet national crisis management committees is like a national disaster management committees are there related to floods and then uh, agriculture ministry, then ministry of water resource, ministry of environment and uh, we, its secretaries they, they are all coming together as far as this apex body is concerned. And then uh, 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 various states, uh, states relief commissioners are there, then central relief commission will be reporting um, uh, same, they, they, they will be state relief commission will be reporting to central relief commissioners and then uh, agencies like in the material department, central water commission and other departments all come together. So, that way uh, there is say we are having a crisis management group and a national disaster management authority. So, this authority looks after say uh, what kind of mechanism to be done or what kind of response should be done for the given flooding problem. Say for example, uh, say in Andhra Pradesh cyclone hazard mitigation project say last few years this has been undertaken and then uh, like hazard mitigation studies were done, then uh, Indian material department uh, early warning capacity through Doppler radar uh, were implemented, the infrastructure creation and restoration, then uh, flood drains and embankment studies were done, appropriate measures were taken, then road restoration, storm shelters. So, like uh, say uh, what kind of things can be done, so appropriate studies through appropriate studies uh, this can be done. So, finally, to conclude flooding is a major problem. So, we have to recognize the linkage between the natural hazard like flood and uh, then development or urbanization effects then connecting the development programs to disaster management that is very essential. Then uh, forecasting and warning system, appropriate forecasting warning systems are very essential. Then we have to go for contingency planning like um, food grain availability, preparedness, uh, preparedness, adaptive cap uh, capacity by creating management systems uh, like that. So, uh, appropriate authority and appropriate system should be made so that uh, flood management is possible in an appropriate way. So, these are some of the important references used in for today's lecture. So, before closing few questions, one is tutorial questions as so, I critically study the uh, flooding problems in India, what are the measures taken by government of India and other state governments to reduce flood impacts, uh, how we can have better flood control measures on watershed or river basin scale. Uh, so, few self evaluation questions. Describe flood and related uh, problems, uh, illustrate short term and long term flood damages, discuss various flood control measures, uh, differentiate between structural and non-structural measures, illustrate flood control and reservoir operations. Few assignment questions, what are the important causes of floods, discuss flood forecasting and warning, uh, what are the important ways of uh, flood control uh, management and discuss the flood risk management and related issues. So, these are some of the important questions which are related to today's lecture. So, by going through this lecture, you can easily answer these questions. So, what we are discussing is um, say uh, flood control and its management. So, under the storm water um, uh, management, this module, module number 8, we were discussing the flood control and management. Um, so, uh, with this, this module is over. Further, we will be looking into drought management issues related to uh, watershed management in the next module. Thank you.